Well, John, we got news. George Kittle news. George Kittle is doubtful for the 49ers game on Sunday against the Cardinals. How big of a problem is this is the question today? Well, I think, you know, when you put this on top of Trey Lance making his first career NFL start, uh, and when you go, well, what are they going to try to do to make it easy for Trey? You go, well, they're going to try to run the ball. Well, George Kittle might be one of the most unique offensive weapons in the NFL because he blocks, right? I mean, obviously he's great in the passing game with the ball in his hands. He's an unstoppable force, but he's so big for the run game. Like when you have, they have Trent Williams and McGlinchey, who are two of the, I mean, Trent Williams might be the best run blocking tackle. McGlinchey's a really good run blocking tackle. And then you put Kittle on one of those two sides with check. There's a reason the Niners have been so successful running the ball for years, and he's a huge part of it. So taking him out, more pressure on Trey Lance as a passer? Yeah. Um, by the way, subscribe to this channel. Like this video. We're presented by Tito's Handmade Vodka. Yep. P podcast below in the description. Subscribe to that as well. Tito's presenting sponsor. Thank you, Tito's. You know what I think of listening to you talk is that Tom Brady. You remember that Tom Brady clip that went viral a few weeks ago about Tom saying the, game's, the game is softer now? It's, it should be the quarterback's responsibility to protect himself by aligning his blockers properly. Like, it's not just about the run game with George. It's about blocking a defense that has created, well, I think quarterbacks have four fumbles against them. One of them was kind of a weird fumble. But they have gotten after the quarterback and created fumbles, the Arizona defense. Okay, yeah. they've created the third most turnovers. I mentioned it in the Trey Lance video we did in the league. And now you've got good news, Elijah Mitchell and Trey, Lan Trey Sermon, but John, those are both rookie running backs. Okay, so you got two rookie running backs. Running backs are a part of your protection packages. We know at right tackle, McGlinchey struggled with pass protection. And we know that at left tackle, Trent Williams is one of the best when healthy, but you know, let's see how healthy he is. So I think that's, to me, Kittle and pass protection for however many throws you're going to make is critical. Kyle Juszczyk, I think, becomes – he's already a very important player. I think he even becomes more important um, just from a pass protection standpoint. Yeah, I think anytime having weapons – Obviously, these those two guys, Im, you know, impact the run game. But the one thing with a tight end and a fullback is they operate closer to the line of scrimmage. I know George can run like down the seam if you need him to, but you can like he can just do all of his work within five yards of the line of scrimmage. He's like a safety valve for the passer, right? Obviously, Ayuk's more of a deep threat. Debo works the middle of the field, but it's 15, 20 yards down the field, even if it's a deep in or a deep out. George is right there, right? And George is one of their true kind of contested catch guys where you can throw it in the traffic and he can make plays. So it's not just the run game. It's just he's the safety valve in the passing game for a guy that there are going to be times where he's completely swimming. And he has – McDaniel mentioned this on Thursday. There are going to be times when he has no clue what's going on, right? Like he's seen something on their defense that he's never seen. And that would happen to any – young quarterback. It's happened to Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Fields the first couple weeks. That doesn't mean that the play is not even positive, right? You're like, well, I didn't know what the coverage they were in, but my guy ended up being open or I threw it in a contested area and he made a catch. And if George, I give George a lot of credit and I, even doubtful, I'll still be a little stunned if he's inactive. I'll be surprised like, if he doesn't play, yeah. The game means so much to him and shoot his leg up and they got the bye coming up. But it is... We talked about this the last couple of years. I'd, I'd say big picture on this season. He's already, you know, it's like if you're driving, going on a long road trip and you get a flat tire, you know, 100 miles into a 3,000 mile trip, you're like, Jesus. Like he did get injured pretty early in the season. And then I can't imagine him getting bent over last week helped. And now he's playing a defense. This is a guy that hurt him last year. And mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't, when I say hurt him, like Buddha just, He's a physical player, and physical George team. gets put in uncompromised situations. Yeah. And Trey, based on week one, I don't know if he always knows where the ball's going. No, he does throw a few of those quote-unquote hospital balls that people criticize Jimmy for. Now, we haven't had that much Trey, so maybe it was just a result of – but we saw it in the preseason level. He can miss high sometimes, which it happens. Well, it's That's part of the job. Part of inaccuracy is especially when you're just kind of flustered or whatever, you know, you're not yeah. set on throwing yeah. the ball. This is part of the great catches are made on – like. There's been a million great catches in the league. Every great catch has been made on a ball that wasn't thrown between the numbers. That's the nature of a great catch. So it's part of the deal. It's part of the position. Not everything's perfect, but um, 
Yeah, it's and we've seen Kittle in that. Kittle was in that spot last week in the end zone. He got crunched on a ball yeah. that Trey Lance just threw. Big time hit. Yeah. So uh now Ross Dwelly, you know, they've he has made plays for them before. But Probably it's wanted. it's it's constantly the Charlie, but it's this game. Okay, Byron Murphy's out. All right, well, oh, but now Kittle's out, right? And this is the sport. No one's ever healthy. But you'll maybe you lose a little bit of the advantage that you had without Murphy if Kittle can't go. Do you think we uh, can take Ross Dwelly's calf and put it in George Kittle's body? I don't know. I haven't seen their calves side by side. It's a good yeah. question. <laughs> but even if it was just 80% of his old calf, just uses, you know, when someone gets hurt and social media is like, take my knee, you can have my knee, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do one of those. <laughs> yep. I don't think that's an option, unfortunately. I don't think the doctors have gotten there yet. No, I don't think they have either. But we'll see. I'm with you. I, You know if he's not playing, it's bad. And the other part of this is even if you win without – we've seen now for a few years, it's like he plays in a way and he plays a position that's just going to wear your body down. You don't want to use that bullet up in the first month of the season. I think but. if you just ask every NFL GM and every NFL coach and probably the majority of NFL players, when would you choose to have your buy? Most would probably choose – between seven week seven and week nine, right somewhere in the the middle spot, the Niners buy might be coming at a decent time just to get some of these guys healthy. Yeah, or, or maybe it's in five more weeks we'll be like, yeah, these guys are just always injured. Mm -hmm. Like one problem for George, and they were lucky, right? They used a fifth round pick. He's a star. They didn't actually pay him that much money. He is such a good player, but he cannot just have a like. I'm watching Kelsey and and. Uh, and Waller. Now, granted, they are not asked to play in the trenches like George. That's just not their deal. But they are. It's just watching them week in, week out. They feel much more fresh than George. Like George yeah. just well, feels like a, a defensive lineman. I think we've talked about this. Like the yak bros. Part of that is you're just taking guys on all the time. Well, George does but when he catches the ball. I know. But part of this, you're right, is is just the nature of there are no plays off if you're George Kittle. Now, yes, when he catches the ball, he fights for every yard and he goes a million miles an hour. But there's just there's no plays off for him, given the nature of, of where he is on the field. Because if what he's his, not but catching, it, he's but at his age, you know, he's he was obviously a, a fifth year senior in college. You now he's whatever year five in the NFL. Like his style is a style. Like he's not, you know, when George turned 30, he became a little more finesse in the open field getting down. Like that's not like no. he's wired like he's wired, which yeah you'd say is one of his greatest strengths when he's healthy. Cause he's just like, you remember that game against the saints? He caught a quick out route threw seven guys off and went 40 yards down the sideline. Oh yeah. You remember all the other games when seven guys hit him, And by the end of the game, he could barely walk, <laughs> which is commendable. Like I, this is the balance in football. Once you get to the point, like George, not a soul in the world would question your toughness, but we would question like, we need you here. Like, right. our but he's not doing it. Right. No, I know. Prove but, it to anybody else. But you, but you have to, if there's a balance of like, George, it's okay every once in a while to like not take on those six defenders. Yep. And I do think he takes great pride in that. Like, yep. motherfuckers, you can't tackle me. And he's right. He gains I'm extra I'm a team yards. leader, and part of it is because I play like this. It does take a toll on us, the guy's body, though. 